morning. We're getting ready to begin our service for today with devotion. Ushers, will you take charge of the doors, please? We'll start off with scripture this morning. We'll start off with scripture, um, Psalms 20. That is Psalms 20, verses 1 through 5. Give you time to find it. Psalms 20, verses 1 through 5. And it reads, May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of God of Jacob protect you. May he send your help from your sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you desires of your heart and make all your plans succeed. May, he, may we shout for joy over victory and lift up our banners in the name of God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Thus I have Psalms 20 verses 1 through 5. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading of his word. If you can remain standing, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Once again, it's nice to see everybody out here this morning, even with the conditions not being favorable outside, but there's nothing we can do about it. Let us pray. Father, thanks once again for allowing us to come to your house of worship. We just ask your almighty God to continue to bless us as we go forward from this day. Let the preach word be a blessing to our souls, almighty God. Let the pastor come to us like no other. We ask your mother God to continue to bless everyone that in the sound of my voice that's virtual, in resting homes, on the streets, incarcerated, or wherever they may be. We know, Almighty God, all we have to ask you and you will lift us up. We ask your mother God to continue to bless everyone throughout this world, no matter who we are and what we've done. Amen. Ha! 
on and praise him. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. How great is our God. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
Today. He's worthy, worthy of all of our praises. What a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve on today. Praise his name, praise his name. Good to see each of you this morning in the, in the house of the Lord. Thank God you made your way through the rain to get here today to lift up the name of Jesus and magnify him together in the holy sanctuary. Have you been blessed already today? Have you been blessed already this morning? My, my, my. Amen, 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 amen. As you remain standing, let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. God, we glorify you today. We magnify you today. Not just today, but every day. And every day that you make and you include us in it, we're so thankful and so glad. We give you honor. We give you praise. We know you're the only God there is, and we understand that you sovereignly rule this world because you created it, you made it, it's yours. We all belong to you. All of us belong to you. You blessed us, O oh God, with our minds today. You gave us the ability to move around today. We thank you for our health and strength. And whatever, whatever stage it is, it could be worse. So we thank you right now. We thank you for those that are in the sanctuary and those that are in the virtuous sanctuary. We pray that you would minister to all of us. Bless us, O oh God, through the songs and the prayers and the word today. Let this day be a genuine, authentic day of worship and praise. This is the day the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice in it. Thank you now in advance for how this service will flow and how lives will be transformed and pray somebody will surrender to Jesus in his name we pray amen and amen put your hands together and give God praise today hallelujah hallelujah let us sing our hymn for this morning our hymn for this morning if you would lend your voices together and let's sing with uplifted voices just a little talk with Jesus hymn number 298 in the hymn book. Amen. Amen. It makes all the difference when you can have a little talk with Jesus. It makes all the difference in the world. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul it bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above just a little talk with Jesus all right everybody oh now let us have a little talk with Jesus let us tell him all about he will heal he will answer. Oh, feel a little prayer with you. And you know, oh, have a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Yes, it will. Sometimes my past seems drip without a ray of cheer. And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. The mist of sin may rise and hide the starry sky. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear. And he'll answer, oh, 
Feel a little prayer will turn it. And you know, know that the fire is burning. Come on. Have, have a little, little talk, talk with Jesus. Say it one more time. Oh, now let us have, have a, little a little talk, talk with Jesus. Let us tell, tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faith and cry. And he'll answer. And you know that the fire is burning. Oh, have a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. Hallelujah. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Have a little talk with Jesus. Make it right. You may be seated in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. Again, greetings and good morning to each of you. It is good to see your lovely faces and have you in the house of God together worshiping the Lord. We welcome those of you who may be guests of us today. We thank you for coming and joining us in our worship experience. We pray you will be blessed by the Lord and what the Lord has to say to you and to all of us on this morning. We uh, thank God for the power and the presence and the personality of the Holy Spirit that dwells in every believer Every believer who has invited Jesus Christ into their heart as their personal Savior has been given and granted the blessedness of the Holy Spirit, who is God himself, walking with us and uh, being a part of our daily life. What a wonderful, wonderful thing to realize and to know as you move forward through, day, through the day. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. To the system pastor of the church and to Reverend Wilson that is here, and of course Reverend Morris who's singing with the praise team, uh, to the first lady, uh, we say happy birthday, amen. Uh, God bless Sister, sister Carolyn, and see another year, another birthday. We are thankful and grateful that she's healthy and strong and beautiful, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah, amen. She works hard at that, looking pretty and and uh, staying healthy. She works hard at that kind of thing. Yeah, she's working out every day, uh, you know, her regiments, thread, treadmill, and all the other kind of stuff she got, you know, that she's working it out. She works it out every day. Works it out every day. Praise God. Amen. So now she told me uh, I'm going to get that uh, cocoa, bo cocoa bottle figure. I said, uh, I said, well, you already got that. What, what you look, what, what you trying to get now? I don't get it. I don't get it. You already got that. Praise God. I won't be able to stand it if it get any worse than that. I'm, coach, I'm gonna have to move out of the house. I'm trying to tell you, terrible man. But you know. But anyway, uh, happy birthday to her. And I understand that there are some lovely people in the church wanting to make some presentations. And uh, Sister Wanda. I was told you were going to make the presentation today, so I'm going to let you come forward and make your presentation and uh, show some love to the First Lady. Amen. Good morning, team. Good morning. Uh, we're all family here, yes, but I need my sisters to come and stand with me. All right. We're more than a ministry. We are sisters. And we want to take this opportunity just to say a great big happy birthday. I thank you. I love you to our sister Carolyn. Because as our advisor for the women's ministry, she is our guide. She's a guidance person. She's a person of guidance. She gives us instruction. She does it with integrity. She does it with inspiration and with much influence. You can't tell her no. <laughs> She's very generous. Her generosity is not only exhibited in her giving, but also in her gifts. She's got a gigantic heart. And lastly, her gratefulness. There's not a time that comes that she's not grateful for whatever is being done for her, through her, or by her. 
She's very thankful. She's very thoughtful. And she's very thorough. She will not let you do anything halfway. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it right. But Carolyn, we just want you to come forward and receive these gifts of love that we have for you today. Sister Carolyn, would you come back over? Good morning, New Ebenezer. Good morning. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And we thank God for the love. We thank God for Sister Carolyn. And we appreciate all that she does. And we appreciate all that you do at, as sisters in supporting her. And we are grateful that, um, you know, they said behind every good man, there's a good woman. OK, so you're looking at a good woman, and you're looking at a good man. <laughs> Praise God. And so. We want to say to you happy birthday, but we want to make sure we include the church. So I'm going to ask you very quickly if you could reach in and pull out something, a love gift that you can give to Miss Carolyn, and just quickly just come up and just put it in the basket. Thank you all. We have one more uh, announcement from the Valentine Social. Uh, Felicia, would you come forward and, and do that for us quickly? I decided to do all this at the beginning today because last Sunday, our internet provider, uh, the services malfunctioned and stopped, and uh, they didn't get most of the sermon, and all that we did after the sermon, they didn't get any of that. So I didn't want to take that chance today. Good morning, family. Real, Good morning. real quickly, just want to remind you, please go and get your tickets for the Valentine's Social. Miss Doris is in the back. She has the tickets now. Uh, it will be a great event. The dress is semi-formal. Dinner will be served. The DJ will be there. You'll be able to dance, have a great time, socialize. It's really going to be great. And we want to see you there. So please, we have to give the caterer a head count. So please go ahead and get your tickets. We look forward to seeing you there. Yes, good morning again. 
we're going to need that head count by February 2nd. You know, this way we can give Coretta, you know, the head count. And also, I'll be having the tickets for John Lakin if anybody's interested. And if you don't go to the social, you still can get the tickets. And they are only $10. So I will be having them on me uh, for the rest of the two weeks if y'all interested. Thank you. Thank you both. Come on, give God praise for the um, couples ministry leaders. We thank you so much for um, what great leadership you're giving to this uh, ministry and uh, one of some of the great events that have been planned so far. We thank God for them, for them and uh, thank those of you who have supported the ministry thus far. Amen. Thank you again for your kindness, your thoughtfulness, your love you've shown to the First Lady. Greatly, greatly appreciate uh, this church and all that you have done, not just for her, but for, for our family. We really, really do appreciate you very much. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. And again, we um, uh, thank God for those who are worshiping virtually at home. We thank you for your, for your uh, faithfulness in that regard. Uh, unfortunately, uh, last Sunday, uh, our internet provider uh, services uh, went down. And it's always uh, <laughs> amazing to me that when there is a uh, malfunction with the internet service uh, here at this complex, it seemed to happen in the middle of my sermon. You know, it rarely happens Monday through Friday, you know, when we're doing the course of a regular day's work, <laughs> you know, here, uh, Brother Vaughn. But when it goes down, it seems to go down or quit working when I'm preaching. So, you know, it's a little frustrating, and I know it's got to be frustrating for those who are worshiping at home or wherever they are, and they are getting the services in order to worship the Lord. And so I can't, uh, I can't obviously uh, control that, and uh, I can't even guarantee that it won't happen again. But uh, I pray that uh, those of you who are, you know, continuing to worship virtually, you do understand that we are, to a degree, at the mercy of the technology. If it works, all is well. But if it goes down, and unfortunately, it has gone down before in the middle of the sermon where you're listening, trying to get the word, and then, you know, something happens and, and it's, uh, the signal has been shut down and you can't, you can't receive the word. So I hope that doesn't happen today. I hope it doesn't happen today. Uh, and we're praying that. Uh, the word will go forth without any kind of interruptions, but uh, again, we are praying that the technology will, will remain strong and, and the service will continue to be streamed to wherever you are. Don't forget that uh, we should continue to give to the Lord our tithes and offering, and we thank those of you who've done so, and those of you who mail your offering in, those who have dropped it off, and those who pay, those who uh, give uh, electronically online. We thank you for your faithfulness and giving those who have joined the campaign and you making your pledges. We truly, truly appreciate you doing that as well. Uh, it is time uh, for those you're especially vir worshiping virtually uh, to give or electronically, uh, to give through Gillify or Cash App, to give your tithes and offering, your pledges to the Lord. I hope that you would do that and uh, you would do that now. And those in the sanctuary who have not had the privilege to do so, please do so before you leave. Please do so before you leave. You can't beat God's giving no matter how you try for the more you give the more he'll give to you just keep on living because it's really true that you can't be God's giving no matter how you try. Can't do it, you can't do it, no matter how hard you may try. Amen. Amen. We 
ask you to pray with us and pray for us as we share once again, uh, focusing on our theme, uh, Soul Winning Jesus' Way. Uh, we want to remind all of us that the primary reason why the church was born and why it was instituted and why it still exists today is to bring new people into the kingdom, is to bring new people into a knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Savior. And all of us have been commissioned by him to go ye into the world and make disciples. You shall be my witnesses. That's what Jesus uh, told us to become for him, his witnesses to win others into the church, into uh, the household of faith. And I pray that, I pray that uh, you, you know, would do what little you can do, whatever that little is, and some can do more than little, to transmit uh, and to uh, touch the lives of people with the love of God that has been uh, a blessing in your life to have him in your life and let others know how wonderful it has been for you to have Jesus with you along this journey. Praise his holy name. Praise his holy name. In the Gospel of Luke, we, um, we are invited you, and we began this message on last Sunday, and um, we made it uh, clear that we were not intending to preach it all on last Sunday, but to, to begin... Uh, sharing some thoughts about it, and by the grace of God, we will continue with it on today. And given the um, the mishap that we had on last Sunday, um, that means that I have to do just a little bit more on the reviewing side than I intended to do on today. But I sympathize, obviously, for those persons who are who are at home worshiping and no fault of their own, uh, the technology malfunction or it fails or it shuts down or quit working and they are then uh, left to wonder uh, what part of the message they did not get and uh, what they did not hear uh, that obviously uh, could have been um, <clears throat> a life-changing moment for someone. I don't, I don't know that. I don't know that. Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. As we look there again, let us see what the Lord is saying in that passage. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was but could not because of the crowd for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complain, saying, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, 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 I give half of my goods to, to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Glory to his name. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And we talked about on last week, uh, using as a subject, we we talked about influencing others to seek the Savior. Influencing, the power of influence. The power of influence. Influencing others to seek the Savior. By way of review, 
of some of the things we made mention of last Sunday. I tried to point out in the beginning that all of us, whether we are conscious of it or not, have the potential to be an influence or influencer by the things we say or we do in the presence of other people. That our lives, in fact, are not lived in a vacuum. That what we do and we say is, um, it's not incidental or coincidental. Somebody might be observing us, or listening to us, and the imprint and the impression that is left as a result of our actions can be life-changing for some people. And some people know that they are in positions of influence and they realize uh, just how powerful that position may be. And some people, unfortunately, they don't use it for the good. They use it for personal gain. And they use it for all the wrong reasons. But when we understand that God has given us all the ability uh, to have some level of influence, I challenge all of us to use that level of influence, whatever it is, in the life of whoever that might be, whether it be a coworker, whether it be a family member, whether it be a friend, or just a stranger that we may meet along the way. Use it as a means to channel God's goodness and God's grace and God's love into the life of somebody who we hope will turn their life in, turn their life in the direction of Jesus Christ and invite Jesus Christ into their life to become their Savior and their Lord. We need him to be more than just our Savior. We need him to be our Lord. And so we all have the potential. We all have the potential, whether we, uh, you know, aggressively seek to influence anybody, or whether we're passively in the way we influence other people. But we all have the potential to move somebody, to challenge somebody, to... Uh, garner somebody's attention and affection just perhaps by our personality alone or our special gifts and qualities and abilities that we have and God has given us. We all have that potential. What I want us to do is to use it for the kingdom. Use it to turn men and women and young people in the direction of the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Use words and use uh, uh, your testimony, use your technology to advance the kingdom of God, to share what you know about the Lord Jesus Christ. On yesterday, I had the privilege and the pleasure to conduct a leadership workshop for an association in Aiken County on yesterday morning. I conducted a leadership workshop for an association in Aiken County the dean of the Christian Education Department of that association invited me to teach the workshop and focus on the role of deacons and ministers, on deacons and ministers, focus on what is the responsibilities and the role of deacons and ministers in the church. It has been my privilege and pleasure to facilitate these kinds of trainings over the many years. I've done them in a number of churches and association and even uh, in the state convention work. Truly, it is something I enjoy doing. I love to do workshops. I love teaching and training opportunities. I began to share with them in that workshop about what the scripture teaches about the role of deacons and the role of ministers in the life of the church. There was a young preacher there, a young pastor there, who was part of the, uh, the group that had gathered uh, to receive the instruction, to receive the lecture that I was going to share. That when the, uh, the, works, when the session was over, when the session was over, uh, there were those who wanted to express their uh, comments about how they uh, felt about the workshop, whether they enjoyed it, whether they learned something from it. And this young pastor got up and uh, he wanted to, uh, you know, express just how grateful and appreciative he was to be there, to have listened, to have learned something 
uh, from, the, from, the, uh, from the lecture and from the workshop. And he further wanted to, admit, further wanted to make me know or to, uh, to remind me that he had been in a class before that I had taught in a lecture setting where I had lectured on something, preaching or whatever it was. And uh, he said to me and to others that were in there uh, that a particular lecture that he'd heard me uh, teach had had a profound Im impression upon him ever, ever since. And I guess it had been some years since I did this. But that he uh, could recall and remember the lecture and, and, and the things I had said about it and how that had uh, shaped uh, his view and his thinking about preaching moving forward. That that lecture had had a tremendous profound impact upon his life, influence upon his ministry and his growth and develop, de development as a minister. That one lecture uh, for him was a life-changing uh, moment. And I began to, began to reflect upon that and took it as a compliment, obviously, took it as a compliment, and to understand that uh, we don't always know in that moment as an influencer that what we are saying or doing will have a lifelong impact or transformation in somebody's life. And it may mean that if we were more conscious of that and realize that, again, our words are not isolated, they are not in a vacuum, we may be very cautious and careful the words that we choose and the actions that we take because they can become imprinted and embedded in somebody's mind and somebody's heart and they take it with them for the rest of their lives. That being said, uh, we ought to therefore make sure that what we say about Jesus is something that draws people to Jesus and not something that drives people away from the Lord. Have mercy somebody. It is always good to know that the work we do is not in vain. That somebody is listening and somebody's life is being blessed, being enhanced, being transformed for the good. And as a result of that, the kingdom is better off when we have people who are growing and other people whose lives are being changed by our testimony, by our teaching, and by the lives that we live. Jesus here in the text, as we began talking about this on last Sunday, was on his way through Jericho. And as he was on his way through Jericho, there was a crowd gathered around him. People were all around him because they wanted to not just see him, but some actually were interested in listening to what he was saying. As he walks along, Jesus oftentimes would be teaching the disciples and teaching the crowd that had gathered around him. And as he made his way through Jericho, uh, there was a residence of Jericho who had obviously learned that Jesus was coming, that, coming through or coming that way, or maybe somebody... Uh, called his office or they may have texted him I'm just using this in the modern day kind of language and said that man that uh, you had been uh, talking about you were interested in one day meeting I, uh, he's hap he happens to be heading this way now and the Bible tells us that man Zacchaeus perhaps after getting the news that Jesus is passing through Jericho passing through his area passing through where he close to where he is he rushes out of his office he rushes out into the streets and all that he might get a glimpse, get an opportunity to see the man that he's been longing and yearning to see. Because as I suggested to you on last Sunday, uh, it's quite possible that this Zacchaeus who was a uh, administrator, a uh, office holder uh, under the administration of King Herod, that he may have learned about this Jesus and the special and the uniqueness about him through other tax collectors who he supervised. He was the manager of the, uh, the uh, revenue department, so to speak, if you will. And there were others who worked under him 
whose lives had been changed for the better, having met Jesus themselves. And they perhaps began to talk so highly about Jesus and how he had changed their character and changed their life and changed the way they do business as tax collectors that what they used to do, they weren't doing that no more. Zacchaeus, perhaps being impressed, at least to the point of, as I told you last week, curiosity, wanting to know more about this Jesus that he's heard about, perhaps through those who worked out of his office. Now he hears that this Jesus who he's heard so much about is coming through the area. He leaves his place of business, if you will, or leaves his home, if you will. However, the news got to him and he rushes out that he might not miss the opportunity to see Jesus. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, when you, when you get an opportunity uh, to get to know Jesus, take full advantage of it. I mean, if some other Christian, some other believer invites you to come to a camp meeting, invites you to come to a Bible study, invites you to come to a worship, uh, don't take that lightly. You ought to, you ought to come on and, and, and you ought to be a part of the assembly. You ought to come and sit and listen and see if you can learn more about this Jesus that your coworker, that your friend or family member is talking about. You ought to just stop what you're doing like Zacchaeus did. Stop whatever he was doing so he could get out on the street and get a glimpse and see this man named Jesus. So the Bible tells us that this chief tax collector, this is in the minds of the people who despise the tax collectors. And this perhaps is another way for Luke to, to, Luke to help us to understand that among sinful people, he's the big sinner. <laughs> I wish I had somebody hear what I'm trying to tell you. I said among the, the sinful people, he would be characterized as the big sinner. Paul even thought of himself as the big sinner. He calls himself the chief of all sinners. That's what Paul referred to himself as. In other words, he was trying to help us to understand uh, not, to take, not to think more highly of ourselves than we should. Not to try to put ourselves you know, up on some kind of pedestal. Not try to make ourselves feel better than other people. We always ought to have that kind of humble kind of feeling about ourselves that we really are worthless human beings. We really need God more than we understand we need God. We really are more dirty than we really believe we are. I know we dress up and look good. I know we have, you know, great professions and this and that and a great reputation among those we work with. But in the eyesight of God, we are still, if we don't have Jesus, considered to be filthy rags. We still consider by God, that may mean not how you feel about yourself, but God feels, God says that you are still uh, one that is ungodly, unholy, and unrighteous until you come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you may not bother nobody. You may be a good, good person, I mean, in the sense of what good is, but unless you have a personal relationship with Jesus, your goodness cannot save you. Your goodness, as the Bible said, is nothing but filthy rags in the eyesight of God. Because God will not allow you to uh, ignore the path that he has paved, the path that he has made for us to be saved, for us to be cleansed, for us to be made righteous. And that path is through the death of his son who died on the cross that all of our sins may be washed away. Washed away through the blood of Jesus Christ. He comes out of wherever he was, either at his business or at his home, to get out into the streets. He was curious to see this man named Jesus. So he, 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 puts, he becomes like a little child, as I told you last week, the second point, that he came like a little child. There is the curiosity, then there is this childlikeness about him. That he runs and he jumps up into a tree so he could see Jesus because he couldn't see him because he was a short man and those who had gathered around Jesus was much taller than he was. So he said to get, some, to get a better advantage above the crowd, he climbed up into a sycamore tree. Imagine that. A respectable administrator, a respectable uh, part of the cabinet of King Herod out on the streets, up in a tree in his suit and tie. What a sight that must have been for people to see the man that they come in to pay their taxes, the one that they had in such, you know, uh, uh, honor and perhaps some measure of respect for just because of the position that he held. Here he is acting like a little boy. 
But that helps us to understand that those who come to Jesus have to come that way anyhow. They have to come looking for him and seeking for him with a childlike mentality. Jesus said as he put a child before his disciples, you must become like this little child if you're going to enter into the kingdom of God. The only way to get to God is to humble yourself and become like a little child. And so it is. So it is. Zacchaeus models he uh, exemplifies to us in this moment as he <laughs> uh, put aside his, his grownness, his adultness, and become like little kids out in the streets. Because that's the way you ought to be if you're a member of the kingdom of God. You have to come down and be mine in your mindset as a child who is, who is uh, vulnerable, the child who, who needs the guidance and the, and the direction and the protection and all that those who are adults give and provide for children. That's how we have to approach God and that's how we have to present ourselves to God as one who needs God like a child needs their parents. Have mercy somebody. And so there is in this opening part of this text the ideal of curiosity and then of course we see the childlikeness of Zacchaeus. But thirdly, watch this, if you will. It's not just the curiosity of this text that is important for us to understand and the childlikeness of this text. But notice Jesus says in the story, it's in the text, Jesus looks up and sees Zacchaeus in the tree. And watch what he does. He says, come down, Zacchaeus. And notice what happens. Zacchaeus immediately and instantly comes down, which means we notice his compliance. Can I get somebody to see that with me? We saw his childlikeness in climbing the tree. My, my, my. Curiosity started it all. That's what starts most of us in terms of why we want to pursue this, why we want to pursue that. Somebody sparked some curiosity. It might have been a movie, I told you. It might have been a movie. It might have been a vacation spot. Somebody talked so much about it. It might have been a cruise. They talked so much about it that you just got to do it for yourself. You got to go there for yourself. Curiosity started when somebody planted a seed. And what we have to do is get the people to come to Christ. We got to first get them curious. They want to know about him. And we can do that by what we say about where we live. That somebody might see that and say, if Jesus is making you like that, if Jesus got you like that, I want this Jesus also in my life. It starts with curiosity. And then we come to the child likeness. But then God calls. And when he calls, the Bible said, in the moment you hear his voice, heart not your heart. When God calls, when the spirit of God moves upon your mind and your heart and you hear God dealing with your conscience about who you are and your need for him, that's the time for you to comply. That's the time for you to respond. That's the time for you to surrender and give your life to Jesus. Zacchaeus comes down, Deacon Brown. He comes down immediately, instantly. He obeys, watch this, what the Lord has said. We'll never get on the road to salvation if we don't do what he said. Can I get somebody to say amen to that? I said we got to do what he said. Jesus said, don't just be a hearer of the word. I ain't making this up. He said, do not just be a hearer of the word, but you got to be a doer as well. It ain't enough for you to hear all these sermons. It ain't enough for you to be in Bible study and hear great teaching. It ain't enough, my brothers and my sisters, for you to be reading the Bible if you're not going to comply with what it says. You got to comply with what it says. You got to hear God's voice and say, yes, Lord, I hear your voice. Yes, Lord, I'm willing to do what you say. Yes, Lord, I'm willing to follow you. Zacchaeus, I'm not making it up. Coach Fry, I'm not making it up. Zacchaeus heard the voice of Jesus calling his name. <laughs> Isn't that a good thing to know? That God knows you personally. He knows you by name. <laughs> there is no way in the text that suggests that he had prior uh, introduced himself to Zacchaeus or Zacchaeus had ever met him. But watch this, Jesus knew his name. 
And I need to remind somebody in here because God is who God is. He know your name before you knew your name. I wish I had somebody knew what I'm talking about. And he knows how to call you personally. He can single you out personally because God ain't just interested in group-wide salvation. He's interested in personal salvation. He's trying to reach you individually and personally. He want to have a personal relationship with you, not just a church relationship, not just a group relationship, but God wants to have a personal relationship. And so it is, and so it is, he complies, and he leaves, watch this, everything behind. Mm. All of his work that he had to do, that can wait. I wish I had somebody. All the calculating and counting he had to do with all that money coming in as a tax our, our, our collector, he said, all oh, that can wait. I wish I had somebody. The reports that got to be turned in by a certain time of the day, Reverend Wilson, he said, that can wait because Jesus is coming through. Is there anybody in here is willing to put some things behind you, put some things on the back burner, say, I can wait to do this tomorrow. I can wait to do this next week. It really ain't that important. It really ain't no life-breaking kind of thing. I can really put this off, but Jesus, I can't put him off. I wish I had somebody understand that you're watching me and listening to me wherever you are you've been putting Jesus off for so many weeks you've been putting Jesus off for so many months you've been saying Jesus can wait no Jesus can't wait because your sickness cannot wait I wish I had a witness in here your troubles cannot wait your burdens cannot wait you need them lifted right now you need to be healed today it can't wait and can I tell you who can do it that Jesus that you putting on the hold that Jesus got all power in his hand he's got power in the hem of his garment I wish somebody would just talk back to me and tell somebody, I came to Jesus just as I was, where it wounded and said, yes, I wasn't all fit for this or that, but I came to Jesus just as I was, and Jesus received me. Is there anybody up in here ready to get Jesus in your life? Okay. Okay, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Watch this now. Here it is. Here it is. Zacchaeus came, he complied to Jesus. And he does it with total trust. Total trust. No reluctance, no regrets. Have mercy, somebody. No hesitation at all. Once he heard the voice of God. And let me tell you something you'll know God's voice from anybody else's voice. I mean, when you hear his voice, you'll know it's God's voice. And that's the time when you need to turn it over to Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Wish I had more time. Watch this now. One more thing. I ain't going to finish it up today, but I'm going to give you one more, though. I'm going to give you one more. There is that curiosity in the text, you see. He was curious. Yes, he was. And then there is the child childlikeness that's there. I'm not making it up. It's in the story, you see. And then we see his compliance is right there. I'm not making it up. Can I give you one more C word? Then here it is. The Bible said he comes down and Jesus, watch this. Jesus said, man, I got to go to your house today. Now, this is really strange now in some respects. This don't usually happen. We don't usually do this. We don't usually invite ourselves to somebody's house. We usually wait for them to what? Invite us into their house. Okay, okay. Hey, I'm missing somebody. But something as serious as being saved the Lord said, I might have to just invite myself into your life because if I wait on you, you may never do it. I wish I had somebody talk back to me. The Lord said, watch this, it's in the text. The Lord said to him, I must abide in your house. And watch this. Zacchaeus didn't say, look, I ain't cleaned up. You know that's how we act. We got to get some stuff we say cleaned up. That's why some people waiting till my, I'm going to wait till I get a little bit better in the way I live. Wait till I straighten out a little bit more in my finances. Wait till I, you know, fix some other things in my life. Then I'll come to Jesus. Have mercy, somebody. But you and I know we'll never get there. We'll never get better than we are right now. The only hope we have is to just let the Lord in right now with all of the mess and the misery, with all the wrong and the false. Let him in right now. Zacchaeus, watch this. Here it is. Zacchaeus, watch this. His cheerfulness. It's in the text. It's JB word. The text says he received Jesus joyfully. 
Zacchaeus said, look, look, Jesus is coming to my house. <laughs> oh, man, he got the shouting right there in the streets. He said, I, I can't even, I can't, I can't hold my emotions. I can't hold the way I feel. I've been wanting to see this man. I've been wanting to meet this man. He's finally coming to my house. And the Bible said he was cheerful. He was glad. He was excited. Can I tell you this? When you really get saved, that's ought to be the reaction. You ought to be excited. You ought to be shouting. You ought to be cheerful. You ought to be glad because the Savior of the world stood enough for you to die on a cross that you might be saved. You ought to be happy. You ought to be smiling from end, one end of the face to the other that Jesus will come to your house, your dirty house that you ain't cleaned up in a long time. He's coming to your house. It ain't about no physical house. It's about your heart, your life. The Lord was trying to tell him not so much about his house. I'm coming down to your heart. Oh, God. He was, Reverend Legree, cheerful. <laughs> finally, finally, finally. Heard so much about this man. And I bet he done heard a lot about me. I'm the chief tax collector. I'm most hated by all the Jews because I've been robbing them. I've been stealing from them. I've been exploiting them. I took them and I made myself rich from them. God, but Jesus said there's nobody, listen, that can be as worse as Jack Kears that is not worthy of God's grace and mercy. That went over your head. I said, listen to me. If he took time to hang out with the worst of all sinners, a man named Zacchaeus, who when the people heard Zacchaeus was with Jesus, they said they cannot believe a holy man like Jesus. A man who said he's, he's God in the human flesh. A man who says he's tried to live by the laws and commandments of God. I cannot believe that he would low, think so low and hang out with somebody like the likes of Zacchaeus. Does he not know it's going to tarnish his reputation? Does he not know it's going to tarnish his credibility? But Jesus, he'll take a risk. Watch this. Are people talking about him to hang out with you? He, listen, he loves you that much that he's willing, he's willing to have talk about him in the house and in the streets and in, in, in every other place just because he loves you enough to save you. Zacchaeus was happy. Zacchaeus was cheerful. Oh, yes, he was. That's how I was the other day and I'm leaving you. I got two more, but I'll wait the next Sunday to give it to you. Have mercy, somebody. I was just, no, I can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. Listen, listen. Uh, I was telling uh, Carolyn the other day that, uh, you know, my, uh, my little, bitty, little bitty lady, uh, her birthday, Carolyn's birthday yesterday, her birthday is next, this coming Saturday. So we were uh, riding along. I, I was telling, telling her that Camille called, called me the other night. Four years old, she knew I'd pick up the phone and call. And I, you know, blows me away that they know so much how to work technology like they do, but they do. They know how to do it. Anyway, she called me, and I was just so tickled what she said on the phone. It just tickled me to death. So she said, Papa, what you doing? I said, uh, I'm not doing anything, Camille. What you doing? She said, I just want to tell you I love you. And she said, she said, she said, now, now, I need you to come down here and marry me. <laughs> I said, Camille, I said, Camille, I'm your papa. I said, plus I'm already married. <laughs> she said, she said, but when you coming down to see me? I said, well, I know your birthday is coming up, and I I'll be down there to see you before your birthday. But she, 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 she put some joy in my heart. 
just by the call alone was enough to bring joy. But when they start talking about the kind of stuff they be talking about, I love you and I want to see you, that's enough to make you smile. That's enough to make you happy. Is there anybody up in here ever been happy just to have Jesus give you a call? Just to have Jesus to stop by and see you for a minute. You might have been in the hospital lying in your bed of affliction, but Jesus came by to see you. Is there anybody in here glad that the Lord takes time for you? Glad that the Lord cares for you? Is he all right? I said, is he all right? Yes! Yes! Ah! Yes! He's all right. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. We ought to be influencers. And we all can do it. We all can make a difference to kingdom work if we avail ourselves to it. If we intentionally use those opportunities that God may give us to bring somebody to cause some curiosity in the minds of someone who hadn't thought about God and thought about the church hadn't thought about anything religious at all but we plant a seed to make them now become curious to want to know about, about what you've been shouting about what you've been singing praises about the man who you say you love and you said love you more that he gave his only begotten son to die on a cross for your sins. Praise his name. I pray you heard God speak to you today. And if you have, if you're worshiping in here or worshiping out there in the virtual world, and you happen to hear God speaking to you today, take the moment now and give your life to Christ. If you heard his voice, give it to him today. Say, Lord, I give my life to you. I surrender my life to you. I need you. I need you more than I did, that I thought I would ever need you. I need you. All that's going on in my life, frustrated about this and that. I need you to help me. Give me some guidance. Give me some direction. Give me a, a, even a new purpose in life. That's what they did for Zacchaeus. As we will, shall see, in our, as we continue with this on next Sunday, we'll see what happens when someone gets Jesus into their life, into their house, into their presence, what happens in their life. God wants to be in your house, in your heart, in your life, a, a part of who you are. The door is open to churches for those who will come. The door is open. The door is open for you to come. I trust in the Lord. I will trust in, in the Lord. Lord. I, I will, will trust, trust in the Lord. Till I die. Until I die. Oh, who is going down? In the grave with me. Yes. Who is going down? Down in the grave. In the grave with me. Oh, who is going, going down? down? They will answer the question. The this is how they answer the question. When I die. 
Here's what they will say, you see. Oh, Jesus going down in the grave. Uh-huh. Jesus going down in the grave. Isn't that good news? Jesus going down. Oh, and when I die, yes, Jesus going down in the grave with me. Jesus going down in the grave with me. Jesus going down in the grave with me. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. Come on, give God another big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Praise God today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the power influence. Because everyone in here who have come to Christ, somebody influenced you in some kind of way. Something you heard, something you observed that turned you in the direction of Jesus. That's why influence is so empowering. It's equally so that we can influence people to do bad things, horrible things. We saw that with our former president, influencing that crowd up in Washington, D.C. to become violent and so forth and so on. You don't have to use your power in the wrong kind of way. Use it for the good. Have mercy, somebody. Come on, give him praise. Again, we thank God for your presence. Thank God for our ushers, for our media person, for the musicians, for the praise team, for the office and the members of the church. And I will remind you, uh, Deacon Brian is not feeling well today, but he wants you to know that your uh, financial contribution statements are available for those who like to use them for tax purposes. They're available. Uh, contact the office and uh, get your financial contribution uh, that you gave for this past year, 2022, amen. And thank God for those of you who did give, uh, and you're not, of course, most of us don't give, think about no taxes, but that's uh, something the government will allow you to use as a deduction for your taxes, so take advantage of it. But now some people didn't give anything. So you understand how that gonna work, right? Not too good. Not too good. Not too good. God bless you. May God forever keep you. Prayer service. Uh, we're Bible study Wednesday at 6. We're still studying the book of Psalms. And then prayer service at 8 o'clock. Join us for Bible study at 6. Join us for prayer service at 8 this coming week. Let's pray for our sick. Pray for our bereaved family. Pray for this country. Let's just pray. And watch God work in his own way. He said, I work all things out for the good. For those who love him. And are called according to his purpose. Let's believe that. Let's trust in that. Let's live by that. In Jesus' name, will you stand? Is there anything we omitted, for, or omitted that we should have mentioned? Anything before we go? Anybody can think of anything that I should have said or mentioned uh, before we go. All right. If not, let us go praying and let the Bills win tonight. All right. Oh, I don't know about them Cowboys. I ain't talking about them. <laughs> May the grace of God, may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest through and abide with you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.